Let's seal the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We sincerely apologize for bringing uh, off the press a little bit behind schedules. Uh, that's due to some technical issues. Uh, and a big ups to our technical team for sorting all of the issues out. Chris Kane, the one who stands, uh, he's on standby this morning and he joins us. Chris, thank you so much for being part of Off the Press on the Breakfast. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. All right, we're looking at the leadership and quickly, finally, Artiku Wike reconciliation collapses. It's boldly written on the leadership newspaper. Underneath, Rivers' governor says he won't campaign for ex-vice president and also the presidential flag bearer of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubaka. Nominates Amechi loyalists, 16 orders, commissioners. Atiku suspends campaign, visit states ravaged by flood today. Again, Tunubu hits PDP flag bearer, accuses him of plagiarism or plagiarizing PMB's agenda. <laughs> it's really interesting. When you have a national issue, should everybody not think about solving the problem? One third of global economy in recession, Hemefli is saying. Caught others' final for feature of Deziani, Abuja's homes and cars. Kanu seeking stay of execution, federal government declares IPOP leader threat to national security. Misinformation fueling conflict and security distrust in Niger. That's what the president is saying. Well, that's much we can take at this point. All right. Uh, moving on from the leadership, we go straight to the nation. Some interesting headlines on the front page of the nation. Uh, 2023, Wiki rejects Satiku. And I mean, the nation had not put anything about this on I would have been surprised. So no surprises here. 2023, we rejects that to go quite big and quite bold. Um, the writer to that headline, Rivers Governor vows not to campaign for PDP standard bearer. Inaugurates council for Rivers Party's candidates. Sunak becomes fifth UK PM in seven years. EFCC secures final for feature of Madweke's Abuja properties. Flooding, Lagos puts Sikoi, Leki, VI residents on the alert. I hope we won't uh, step out of here and see there's water uh, outside our gate. Uh, federal government tackles UAE over visa ban. And UBA's gross earnings hit $608 billion now in Q3. Uh, APC tackles PDP. Chieftain over remarks on Atiku's, or Tidibu's rather, action plan. And some headlines on the front page of the nation. Away from the nation, we take a quick look at the Daily Trust. Troops nab Boko Haram kingpins in Abuja, Kanu. So one would think that just one kingpin, just one. Uh, so they are kingpins. Tight security at government offices in satellite towns. And you have resident ask government to be proactive, of course. Please launch counter-terrorism Exercise FCTA orders CCTV in public places. National Assembly cannot prosecute corruption cases. Lawan is saying an Islamic Development Bank or bank approves 788 billion naira funding for Nigeria. Produce flood prevention plan in 90 days. Buhari tells minister what happens now. This is some of the headlines on the Daily Trust. Let's quickly uh, round off with a look at the stories at the front page of The Punch. U.S. terror alert, Atiku Tinbu will be demand security beef up, reject campaign suspension. Uh, floods, Buhari demands action plan. By Elsa gets donations. All right, this is a 90-day ultimatum we gave to the Minister of Water Resources to come with a flood action plan. Uh, but I think they, I guess, will give us his thoughts on that. Nigeria loses 3 million oil barrels monthly, FG. Uh, external debt crisis, external debt rises to $840 billion uh, under Buhari. And I think aptly you have a picture of uh, the finance minister there, um, whose job these days it seems is just to announce how much is being spent and how much is being borrowed, and nothing more. ASU, FG, to modify IPPIS in three months, uh, are some of the headlines on the front page of the the punch. Let's quickly bring in Chris Kennedy, one of our guests uh, this morning. Chris, um, I think the big one from um, a couple of the papers happens to be, yes, on Wiki's um, 
uh, apparent rejection of uh, Atiku Abubakar of the People's Democratic Party's presidential candidate uh, with his uh, declaration that he will not be, uh, he will be campaigning for the, uh, the, the candidates of the PDP in River State and no more. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, uh, good morning once again. Um, personally, I'm tired of hearing Wiki Wiki every time. I know Nigerians are tired, and um, I, I'm sure that it's the same with you. Uh, we have 36 state governors in Nigeria, and um, if it's just one governor that you know, complaining, ranting over the 2023 election, then I think it's time for us to move ahead and focus on the election uh, for 2023. So if we can say he doesn't want to campaign for um, Atiku Abubakar are all well and good. Um, it is becoming so irritating for me. Uh, Wiki goes to commission um, a, a project in River State. Instead of commissioning, he used 90 minutes to talk about Atiku and the election, uh, uh, the why he's fighting. He goes to commission road, he wants to commission all sorts of projects. He will not focus on what he's doing and just uh, be talking. So for me, I think it's time for us to just go. Uh, uh, come to some kind of conclusion and this so that uh, people can concentrate on if they are not competing, not putting him on his post and the rest of them. Fine, all well and good. He who, who fights and run away needs to fight under the and that is the essence of uh, war. Uh, we don't just stick to a point and um, despite all the industry um, extended to you from all fronts. And um, you still go to still digging in and digging in. For me, uh, I think uh, I personally feel that uh, we should give less publicity to this. Let us focus and ask the presidential candidates what they have to do for Nigeria and what they can do better than what currently. We are in a very, very terrible situation in the country now. The economy has totally collapsed. Flood has taken over practically every part of Nigeria. We've lost close to 700 lives. And nobody's talking about that. The president just said uh, after giving a mandate of about 90 days, six months for us to have a solution. Nobody is giving a direct solution to the problem at hand. All those that have been displaced, how do we be able to make sure that they are well taken off? The villages, the towns, houses, and crops have been uh, taken over practically swept away. To me, that should be the focus, and not one wicked that is in somewhere um, shouting and talking. He must not have had some genuine reasons and concern when he started, and he has made his point. I see no reason why this should become a form business on a daily basis and something we continue to discuss on national television. I say we don't have other issues. There are so many issues that are part Nigeria that need our attention. So that for me, don't forget also if he has dissolved his cabinet and appointed about 18 commissioners, barely uh, seven months um, to go. And I wonder what these commissioners can be able to do within seven months uh, of uh, his leaving office. But that for me, that is my take on that. All right, uh, Chris, let's quickly talk about uh, the issue of misinformation, fueling conflicts, insecurity, uh, distrust in Nigeria. And we also, I mean, there's also another report. This is actually on the leadership newspaper. There's also another report on uh, the Punch newspaper that where Lai Mohammed is saying, I mean, social media regulation, uh, it's needed because all of this non-regulation of the space that's causing a lot of issues. Your thoughts on this, really? It's not the first time we're talking about We are hearing my mama talk about social media. Right from the session that we got in 2015, we have always talked about regulating social media. And there have been several attempts to um, bring this to the fore by um, presenting a bit to the National Assembly uh, to deal decisively with, uh, with this issue. And whenever this comes to the National Assembly, Nigerians within and outside the country will always cry out and shut foul. The government is just using it to try to use that mustard opinion and spread to silence Nigerians for discussing issues of national interest. Yes, there will always be threats, um, there will always be fake news uh, on social media, with um, verified news and the rest of that. But that in itself, I don't know how to, that will become a threat. What is more threatful for me, uh, if I should use that word, is the killing of Nigerians by Boko Haram, by bandits, the Kintambi that goes on any day, every day. People cannot speak with their eyes closed. Um, a high level of insecurity everywhere. People, policemen being killed like fowls across the streets of Nigeria. 
three days ago, we saw about four policemen being killed, who were killed somewhere in our chair, just those white protecting, protecting, white protecting a clergyman. Um, weeks before that, another set of policemen, about five or six of them, were killed. Why also on the convoy of a senator, Senator Ivan Yunda? Are you saying that the social media that brought about this? No, it's not. Yes, we'll try as much as possible to make sure that people behave responsibly when they are ranting and uh, uh, making posts or making discussion on social media. But if you want to regulate the people using the social media in Nigeria, how do you, you regulate the ones Nigerians living in, or anybody living in Ukraine, living in Russia, living in the United States, living in Rwanda, any part of the world? Because how are you going to regulate that? How are you going to stop them from uh, living? We've tried to do that with uh, the shutting down of Twitter for some months before we, uh, we renegotiated and Twitter started uh, all over again. We've talked about regulating speech group, we've talked about regulating Instagram and rest. My personal opinion should be able to focus on the most important aspects of our social and economic, uh, as well as political life, rather than all these mundane issues. If you, there is no way you can regulate social media, it's not possible, in as much as you try. Don't forget, we have a law already in place that was signed into law in 2015 by the former president of uh, Nigeria, the good, good law, Jonathan. That works called the Cyber Crime Law, which was signed in 2016. If there are issues that you have with um, social media and rest of them, that law has effectively taken care of those issues. So all you need to do is just dust it up and use it to regulate the system as it will, or those that you think that are, are using the social media to cause some kind of um, disaffection and rest of them, hate speech and rest of them. But they are going to for laws again. Our problem is not that of law. In the implementation of whatever we can find or enacted as law, that is the issue. All right. Um, let's uh, look at what uh, the punch is, uh, the nation, sorry, is saying on its front page with uh, uh, some space dedicated to uh, Rishi Sunak, who's become uh, the fifth UK Prime Minister in seven years, the second uh, uh, Conservative uh, Prime Minister in a matter of months, and of course the youngest Prime Minister, the first of Indian descent, the first Hindu Prime Minister in the history of Britain. Chris. You know, you know, it's so funny the way this thing works. If Britain or United Kingdom has been a third world country or Africa, the whole the whole Western world would have said, "Oh, uh, the this country, this political system, uh, um, how will I put in that?" You know, they have the language, they have a way of calling uh, uh, this language. The instability, political instability. Uh, the United States would have issued statements. United Kingdom would have issued statements that would have been threats here and there. But the United Kingdom, within the past, how I many, if I'm not mistaken, within the past four years or thereabouts, they have close to about four or five prime ministers. Like changing your president, it's like between 2015 and now, we said that we've had about five presidents in Nigeria. Do you know what that means? Do you know the, the shock that that would have sent through um, the Western world and across the globe on the level of political instability in Nigeria or any part of the third world? But this is the, this, this is the, these are countries that call themselves first world. But they can't still put their ass together. So, but I think it also has to do with their system. You know, what they run is the parliamentary system, not the presidential system. Because if you jeopardize that vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, the United, King, uh, United States, you will see that no, no um, American president, you've not seen any American president uh, uh, resigning or all like I call it now, in the past, probably in the past 100 years. So it's the kind of system that they were. But the issue is that they have to sort out themselves. It is more of a, an economic problem and issue of uh, trust. I'm not meaning this trust now for my data. I'm talking of trust as individuals. You know how Boris John, uh, what went around Boris, in as much as he was in his bed. But the fact that the people couldn't trust him, the issue that happened around COVID, uh, how he violated uh, COVID uh, regulations. Uh, led to uh, um, the, the British calling for his head and he had to resign. Even by two days ago, when Mr. Charles decided to resign, it was alleged that um, he was also trying to make a comeback. But it was so obvious that he would not be able to get the necessary number of uh, parliamentarians to back his comeback. So that is why uh, uh, the current prime minister, the incoming prime minister, is, 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 that is good because for the first time in the past, how many years of the United Kingdom? You have to have somebody of color 
um, becoming the Prime Minister of the United States, something that nobody ever thought of, just like it happened in the United States uh, when Barack Obama, a black man from Africa, became the President of uh, the United States. What we are seeing is a new world order where anything can happen. All right, uh, quickly, let's share your thoughts on uh, the caption on the leadership newspaper, Kanu uh, seeking stay of execution. Federal government declares IPOP leader a threat to national security. And we also know that the court had, uh, you know, rejected the, uh, you know, order from the federal government. Yes, the federal government has the right to appeal if they so wish. Uh, but which one is more uh, threatening? Is it the fact that we see people being killed in Southeast practically every day uh, because of issue of Nambikali, even though those it's not may not be directly related, or a situation where the economic um, the economy of the Southeast is practically branded every Monday, where people have to sit at home. Uh, now, the worst part of it to me is the news that uh, it broke yesterday that the three court of appeal judges have been redeployed. They both moved from their present and current uh, places of abode or uh, yeah, their jurisdiction and moved to other places from that. We moved to the address of the whole three. That speaks volume about our justice system. That speaks volume about the kind of government we have. We are uh, somebody within the executive just wake up and just uh, wake up and just be doing whatever he likes. It, you are, we are talking of independence of the judiciary. And judges are not allowed to be able to decide on issues based on the evidence before them. And once they do, you start to intimidate them. Don't forget the various attempts in the past that we had so many chief uh, justices of Supreme Court who were arrested for on flimsy excuses and the rest of them. That is itself is a is a terrible and a turn on the rights of the judiciary as an independent body to be able to operate. So, the, uh, personally, I feel the ADF is going to the calorie. Now the calorie should be released. And that, to me, should be the beginning of the issues, ways of assuaging business security or the kind of agitation that is going on in the South. For goodness sake, we see and read of situations where terrible terrorists, where terrorists that have killed thousands and thousands of Nigerians. Anybody, nobody said anything about that. These are people that have been identifying are killing. These are terrorists that have kids. What do we do? We try to... All right, uh, uh, Chris, we, we have to go now. Something like in Africa, in that was kidnapped after the, week, after the jurisdiction of this country. And somebody just went to Kenya and picked him up and brought him and he brought him there. And the court are saying that what he did was wrong. And you say you are appealing. Let's wait and see what this court, um, the Supreme Court will say about it. But I definitely think that a political issue, a solution. Well, Chris, uh, that's the size of uh, off the press this morning. And thank you so much for being part of it, if you can hear me. Uh, this is what we call it a wrap. We take a break and when we return, it will be time for us to dive straight into our first major conversation. But just before then, let's tell you what happened today in history. Please stay with us.